Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In today's do-it-yourself video, we're going to be replacing the upper control arms, also called thrust arms or strut arms, on a late model 5 series BMW. Now this is an E60 or 61 chassis, 61 is the wagon, and this would be the 5 series models from 2004 through 2010 to 2011, depending on the exact model that you're dealing with. The procedures you see here will also be generally applicable to most 5, 6, and 7 series BMW models that use the separate uh, upper or thrust control arms and lower control arms. Now in replacing these arms, we're going to do the whole thing to replace the worn out bushing we have as well as the ball joint. The ball joint on the car we're doing isn't worn out, but we're going to replace the complete arm because the ball joint does have wear and this way we can replace this as a DIY job, quote, in the driveway. We don't need a hydraulic press to remove the bushings. We'll be following the exact procedures for the model that we're doing in the applicable Bentley repair manual, as well as pulling our uh, torque specs from here. Now we'll also be replacing the various nuts that we're uh, removing for the ball joint and the through bolt as these are lock nuts and they should be replaced. You can purchase these arms as well as the Bentley manual and any other parts you might need in our website at bavauto.com. Now let's go ahead and get going with this video and show you how easy this is. Okay, here we are under the driver's side front suspension. This would be your left front. We're going to be replacing the lower control arm. This is also known as the thrust arm or strut arm. And in prepping for that, we have removed the lower splash shield to access the bushing. And we've removed the wheel so we can get to the ball joint nut and the sway bar nuts uh, bolts up here. Now in doing this, we will be removing this nut on the ball joint. And note that this ball joint is not a tapered pin style ball joint. This will come right out when we pull the nut off. We don't need a separator. We'll be pulling the through bolt here. And we'll be pulling this bolt, which is the pinch bolt for the shock absorber on the spindle clamp. And we'll remove this bolt here, which also holds the bracket for the sway bar link so that we're not battling the sway bar when we're trying to pull the uh, hub assembly down a little bit from the strut. We will need to do that because the strut right here won't allow us to pull the arm uh, ball joint at the end all the way up. We have to push the strut up through the spindle just a little bit to be able to pull this. So let's loosen this bolt, loosen the bolts on the bushing, and then we'll remove these two bolts. Okay, now in removing the uh, nut here on the through ball joint, we're going to need to hold the shaft with this female Torx that's in the end of the shaft. Since this is not a tapered style ball joint, as soon as we have the nut loose, the shaft will turn. So we'll get our Torx bit here and wrench on the nut and we'll start our loosening. And at the end we can just turn the shaft and hold the nut. This may be loose enough to just thread off by hand now, yes. You can see that the arm is actually already loose. Now this is a lock nut with this captive washer, but it is a lock nut, so we'll need to replace this. The arm we're going to put on is a Miley brand replacement arm, and it does come with a nut. But if you buy a original equipment arm, it won't come with a nut, so remember to purchase a new lock nut. Okay, now we're going to loosen the nut and bolt on the bushing. We're going to go ahead and just remove the nut, but leave the bolt in to keep the arm in place until we remove the clamp bolts for the strut and pull the hub down a little bit, because remember, we can't get this ball joint out. It's hitting the bottom of the strut. So these are 18 millimeter, and it's very tight here. We can't really turn the wrench much so we'll turn the bolt and just hold the nut. And here's our nut. 
Now this is also a lock nut, so we're going to want to replace this with a new nut as well. This is a crush style lock nut. You don't see any nylon, but the top of the nut is actually pinched to make it a lock nut, so we'll replace this as well. We'll leave the bolt in place, and let's go ahead and take care of moving the strut. Now in preparation for moving the strut up through the clamp, we have to remove the clamp bolt, and we're also going to remove this bolt that secures the sway bar link bracket. That way the sway bar won't be hindering us pulling down on the hub. Now this is 18 millimeter on this bolt, and the nut back here is also 18 millimeter. Here's our nut. This is also a lock nut, so this will be replaced with a fresh one. And we'll pull this bolt right out. There we go. Okay, and now we will remove the second bolt on the bracket here for the sway bar. This one is 17 millimeter. And we'll finish by hand here. And here's the bolt. It's just a bolt, no nut. Now you can see this whole bracket and the sway bar are loose. We'll just set that aside over here. Now we're going to spread the pinch clamp on the strut and pull the whole assembly down a little bit lower on the strut again because we can't pull the control arm out yet. All right, now we're prepping to move the strut up in the clamp a little bit higher again so we have room to pull this ball joint out. So first off, I'm going to use the Mechanic All Spray and just give it a shot around the top of the clamp so it'll move freely. Now, to spread the clamp, release its tension, I'm going to tap a wide screwdriver up into the split to hold the clamp apart just a little bit. Now that should free that so we can pull the hub down on the strut. We may have to do a little bit of prying. So I've got a pry bar here and just give a little bit of pressure. There we go. And we'll just continue to work this until we're far enough down to pull the ball joint out here. Okay, and just grabbing and holding and pulling down. Now we're plenty far down. You can see it's quite loose. We're going to leave this screwdriver in to keep the clamp split. And we can now pull that ball joint all the way out. Now with everything free here, the ball joint. Remember, we have the strut pushed up through the housing, and it's loose. We can remove the bolt on the bushing here. We already removed the nut, as you recall. Okay, now the bolt is out. We've pulled the arm down out of the bracket. Pull the ball joint out over here, and there we go. There's that straight sleeve with a tapered ball on the end to seat it. So we're going to replace the whole arm here. This has a worn out bushing. We're, uh, you can replace just the bushing. It needs to be pressed out and back into the arm with a hydraulic press. Uh, the easier way is by a co complete control arm with a new ball joint too, so you're not putting a new bushing on an old ball joint. And that way you can just put the complete arm together by yourself in the driveway without the need for a hydraulic press. So we have here the replacement Miley control arm, complete with a new ball joint, a new nut, and the new bushing. And we'll just put this in complete so we don't have to do the pressing. So we'll slide up in here, get the ball joint down into position, 
Got the bushing up in the bracket. We'll put the bolt through. Initially, just put the nut on. We do not tighten this until we can compress the suspension. This bushing can't be tightened until the suspension is at its ride height. So once we're all done with everything, we'll leave that bolt tightening for last. We'll push up the suspension on this side using a jack, and then we'll tighten this bolt. So right now we'll get our nut on here. We'll get the through bolt in. Then we'll put our shock back down into the clamp. We'll use a jack pushing up from the bottom until the shock is fully seated in the clamp. Put the through bolt through along with the sway bar bracket here and the secondary bolt on the sway bar bracket. Push the whole assembly up to simulate ride height. Final tighten here and then we're done except for putting our splash shield and our wheel on. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now installing the new nut here, this new arm, instead of a Torx on the end of the shaft, this one is an Allen. This is seven millimeter Allen. So we'll do the same thing we did before, except uh, we'll use the Allen key instead of the Torx. And we'll tighten up this nut and we can actually torque it down to the uh, actual torque value. It'll, uh, we can use a socket on it once it's up and tight as the shaft will stay once there's pressure on it. So we'll do that now. Okay, and now we will insert the through bolt on the bushing. Okay, bolt is in. I'm going to put the new lock nut on the end of the bolt so that it is in place. But remember, we're not going to final tighten this until we have the suspension compressed. Now, to reseat the shock into the clamp here, we need to push up on the uh, hub assembly here. We'll use a jack to do that. And we're going to insert until there's a shoulder on the shock that seats right in the bottom of the clamp. We're going to do that until that's all the way seated. So we have our floor jack here. You can use a uh, hydraulic bottle jack or your actual uh, rolling floor jack. We have a lift jack, a manual lift jack here. So now we'll raise this until we've got enough height that the shock will drop down into the clamp. And it won't just drop alone. We may have to uh, jiggle and pry just a little bit. And we'll just give a little pry on the bottom here to help that drop into place because of the angle it's on. There we go. We need a little more height. There we go. Here it comes into place. And uh, as far as telling if you're all the way in, you can tell the marks on the shock body uh, where it was before. So just uh, make sure it's inserted up to that point. There we go. That is fully seated. And now we can remove the screwdriver that was spreading the clamp. And we will insert the through bolt for the clamp and sway bar bracket. Don't forget to put the sway bar bracket up here. And on the back side, the small uh, sheet metal bracket for the ABS sensor. And with the bolt all the way through, again, we have a new lock nut for this bolt. And we'll torque this bolt to spec in the Bentley manual. But before we do, we'll also install the small 17 millimeter bolt that secures the bracket on the outside. Okay, now we have the through bolt on the clamp in and the bolt, the secondary bolt on the sway bar bracket. Uh, we have the secondary bolt on the sway bar bracket run down snug but not tight. And then we will work this one down, holding the nut and turning the bolt. And we will torque this to spec in the Bentley manual, get it snug here, then we'll get our torque wrench in. And once we have that torqued, we'll leave our jack in place. We've already torqued the ball joint. 
with the jack in place, we'll continue to raise the suspension a little bit until we see the vehicle just slightly lighten on our lift pad. Be very careful with that, and then we'll tighten the bolt. As an alternative to using a jack here, we can put our wheel on and put the vehicle on the ground and then drive up on a set of ramps so we can still get under the vehicle, the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension, and then we can tighten our bolt. So we'll get to torquing here, then jacking and doing our bolt. So here we'll raise the suspension a bit more until we see the vehicle just become slightly light on the lift over here. Okay, we're up and now we will tighten the bolt here. Again, we'll turn the bolt and hold the nut because there's no room to really turn the nut. Now we'll finish tightening this. There is enough room to get your torque wrench here, but realize we're turning the bolt and not the nut. So the torque value will actually be a bit uh, skewed on that. Okay, and here we are. We're removed the jack. We're all set. Everything is torqued to spec. We did this bushing with the suspension under load. All we have to do is put the wheel back on, install our uh, splash shield, and then this vehicle is all set. That wasn't too bad, especially buying the complete arm with the new ball joint and the bushing already pressed in. Again, that allows you to do this at home without any special tools. If you found this video helpful, please hit your like button and send us some comments. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Additionally, check out our tech blog at blog.bavado.com for many more videos and helpful tech articles. And remember as well that all of the parts you've seen here are available in our online store at bavado.com. Now thanks for watching.